of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Those who are watching this afterwards at home, sorry we were not able to live stream this. Uh, one more uh, happening, uh, we forgot the camera at home, so we're recording this on a cell phone and we'll upload this later. I know the sound is not that's good either. I'll make sure to uh, upload the text to my homily to our website. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. And he mentions his wife's rose garden. The 
The soldier says to him, Tell me about your life's roses. Tom Hanks replies, No, that memory is for me. I'm saving that one just for myself. I think this can start to help us understand just a little bit of what Jesus is saying. That there is a love that we reserve just for him. These two soldiers would die for each other. There is no question about their love for each other. Yet there is something higher, something more sacred than even that. We hope that if our mother, father, son, or daughter really needed us, we wouldn't hesitate to come to their aid because of our love for them, the special bond that we have with them because of our relationship, even to the point of laying down our lives for them. But there is a stronger bond, a more intimate relationship, a greater love that is capable of going much, much deeper than that, that we can have with our Lord. Christ is not saying that if we love our parents, children more than we love him, it's probably because we love our family too much. How can we love our family too much? We are called to love others to the point of lay down our lives, loving others as we love ourselves. It's the greatest love that we can have for them. The love we have for our family and friends is a human love. It has human limits. We can only love each other as human beings. We can love Jesus as our Lord. And our Lord is infinite. The love we have for Him is limited only by our willingness to open ourselves up to Him and embrace His boundless love for us. It is an awesome, humbling, terrifying thing to know that our Lord is present inside of us, sustaining us, giving us the air that we breathe, supporting our very lives. When we think of the Lord, our love, or the love our Lord has for us, we realize that it has no horizon, right? no boundary. When we pray, we can be swept up into God's love for us, so that our love then has no horizon, no boundaries, no end. It is a communion that is reserved only for our Lord, one that cannot be shared with a mere human being. So if we feel uneasy when we hear our Lord say, if you love your father or mother, son or daughter more than me, you are not worthy of me, we probably don't need to work on our relationship with them probably need to work in our relationship with the Lord. We need to grow in our love of Him, our discipleship of Jesus. And a good place to start is confession. Nothing keeps us from loving our Lord like sin does, and so nothing will help us grow in our love for Him, like repenting of our sins, receiving forgiveness. If we feel like we are trapped in sin, without a way forward, we need to go and make a good, honest confession. That is a good first step to showing the Lord that we love Him above all things. And then each day, we dedicate our energy towards doing our Father's will. That is how we grow as disciples, and how we grow in love of our Lord. It's the essence of our mission at St. Gabriel's, forming disciples who grow in our love and devotion of Jesus. It's so what we try to do ourselves, and it's what we try to pass on to those around us. Our love for Jesus Christ is meant to be everything to us. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for these past 12 years as we've grown in love with Jesus together. And I have friends and the priesthood who have shared with me stories that are very difficult to hear about their experiences as a pastor. Unfortunately, people can be very nasty, even those who go to church every Sunday or are involved in their parish. So I've been very blessed to be here in Hopkins these past 12 years. And have you all as my first pastor, as Father Paul will be too. We've all been very kind and supportive of me, even with all the changes that we've gone through as a parish and as a school over these years. I've been formed by this experience, and I'll carry it forward. I'm very grateful to you for taking this young priest and helping him learn how to be a pastor. I have quite a few more gray hairs now than I did 12 years ago. I like to joke that each one of them is named after you all. <laughs> but I'll cherish those memories and look forward to visiting every so often in the future. I don't feel like this is really a goodbye because I'm just going to Richfield. It's just down the street, so I hope it to be back to America on a regular basis. In the meantime, let us continue together in our mission as a church here in Hopkins and in Richfield. Let us put our love for Jesus Christ before all else. Let us 
strive to do the will of our Heavenly Father. Let us share this message with our children, and with our families, and with our communities, that all can come to know the abundant love and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten is not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in the love and mercy of our Heavenly Father, the offering of our petition. That all of our non baptized who will, through the preaching of the church, be led to accept the grace and call of God to receive his new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those sickened by the coronavirus, for those that care for them, that they may experience the healing mercy of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians who serve as a government may place their loyalty. Christ of all others, and for peace in our communities and country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For strength to welcome Christ as he comes to us, the stranger, the sick, in prison, and the unborn child. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our pastor, Father Lucas, that the Lord may bless him and guide him at his new parish, and that he knew the gratitude of his parishioners for many years of service to our community. Pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Fall on our prayers and families who are sick and poor and our loved ones, especially Marlene, Thomas, and the great Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now this match is closed with Sol Panira Espino. Lord God, hear the prayers of your church and grant us today what we ask of you in faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant me pray that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope an everlasting share of the mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph for his spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard Archbishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to have passed in from this life, give kind attendance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, we whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Prayer spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacraments. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself fully to you. 
Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. In this divine sacrifice we have offered and received, fill us with life and glory and praise, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You know, we'll distribute communion following Mass, so I would ask that you please uh, remain in your pews after uh, we process out and be seated. Uh, and usher will come. Uh, and dismiss you, uh, we'll spray your hands, uh, and then you'll go up to the communion uh, station uh, with your mask on, uh, reach out, uh, I'll say the body of Christ with my mask on, say amen, uh, place it in your hand uh, without touching you, uh, you move off six feet, uh, and then receive the Lord, uh, place your mask back, and then head straight to the exit. Uh, even if you're not receiving communion, we do ask uh, that you wait to be dismissed, just so that we can have some control over the flow of the, of the people exiting the church. Thank you for your cooperation. So as you know, this is Father Lucas' last weekend here as pastor. And while we know his next parish is happy to receive him, we will miss him and send him off with immense gratitude. Father Lucas has been our pastor for 12 years. He's been tireless in leading us through many changes. He's merged two Catholic churches in Hopkins into our one parish. He helped form our regional Notre Dame school. He's been instrumental in bringing us together as a bilingual parish. He brought a Catholic high school into our main street campus and has spearheaded the renovations of our convent as we prepare for the sisters to move in and join us in our ministries. But most of all, I'm getting an emotional, sorry. We're very grateful for Father Lick as the priest and the person for his prayerful and holy leadership, his Christ-like devotion to our, our faith, and his friendship. His example of using the gifts God gave him to serve others has inspired us as a community. So we look forward to having him back when the pandemic is over for a celebration of his years here. Please help me show Father Lucas 